the reason you're not getting better in ranking up in Rainbow Six is because you're relying on gimmicks and tricks to win rounds. Well, in this video, I talk about specific defense theory to fundamentally improve your defenses to actually become a better player and see the improvement that you're looking for in your rank. Now, that being said, there are a few tips and tricks throughout the video you can use to win you some extra rounds as well. I mean, come on, I'm not a complete psychopath. Enjoy the video. Now, last season, I solo queued to, to Diamond 1. Like, I was almost champ elo solo queuing because, like, it's so easy to just take advantage of the stuff that people don't do. So if you start doing this, it's going to be harder for people like me who join your game to actually abuse the fact that you don't do this. So that's kind of where we're going to start from. The first thing is information. So you, a lot of time, I don't know if you've heard this or not, but a lot of time you hear like, like kill and move. Like when you kill someone, you don't sit in the same exact spot that you killed them from. You kill them, you come pick a new angle, or you move to an entirely different spot just so the information is stale. This is a big thing in like Call of Duty. Like in Call of Duty, um, like TDM or Domination, all the like competitive game modes, besides maybe search, it's always kill and move. So in Call of Duty, what they do is the only information they're actually gathering is from their teammates dying. So if I'm like in hookah bar in Call of Duty or whatever, and I and I kill a guy outside Sunrise, the attacker's gonna call me out. Oh, he's behind, he's behind the Sunrise bar. But in Siege, you can kind of do this with all kinds of information. You can do it with drones, you can do it with sound, you can do it with just lines of sight. So if I if I sprint like this and they see me cross from this doorway, they know that I've sprinted over here, they're gonna call me out, right? So you can take that like kill and move theory and almost convert it to like information and move. So like if I shoot a drone, if I'm playing behind Sunbar and there's a drone that hops over the counter, I'm just gonna shoot the drone. I'm not going to sit here after I shoot the drone because now they know I'm here. Now they could just nade me out um, if, they're, if they're acting on that stale information. So you always want to make sure that their information is stale. So if I shoot a drone here, I want to come over here and pick a new angle. Maybe it's a passive angle like this. Maybe it's a more aggressive angle like this. Maybe I run all the way over to couches and I hold like a weird angle like this. But every time the attackers get that information, you want to... You wanna, change the information to make it different information so that way they're constantly having wrong information on you so you're constantly like getting the advantage on them so like if i'm attacking this and i'm solo queuing which i do this all the time because like people just don't take advantage of this fact say i drone in and i see a guy behind sunbar and i'm like yana or whatever i'm just gonna come in nade the sunbar and get ready for him to be around the sunbar but if this guy goes from sunbar to couches and I just, I drone him, he shoots my drone, and I'm assuming he's still behind the sunbar, and I throw a nade, and I come in like this, I'm going to get shot in the head from couches. So if this guy's actively, like, moving and resetting the information I have, I'm not able to effectively drone him by myself to actually get control of the area. The other thing about, like, having good information is, um, it's also about information you don't have. If you're on the cameras, let's see, let's see this. So if you're on the cameras, and these two, like, outside defaults are left up, you know that their entire team has spawned on this side unless you actively like see them on the default camera, right? But if they only shoot this default cam, you can assume their entire team's like over on this side of the map. The same way like if the 90 cam gets shots, you can assume there's people upstairs. Um, now, if they have a Twitch, it's a different situation, but you'll have probably a bunch of random cams zapped at that point and know they have a Twitch at that point. But um, you can actually use like these default cams to gather information based on what information you have. So if you have, you know, if you have aqua cam up and 90 cam up, and you're not hearing anything on them you're like okay they're not taking the top floor so they must be taking office or sunrise or lobby like you can assume other spots that they're actually going to based off the information you actually have left up so no information is still information in a way if you think about it if you really dig deep down you know just dig down there get your shovel boys the next thing i want to talk about is like different roaming styles and how to um effectively roam a little bit better okay and of course this is like you can kind of apply these these tips to like more maps or you can just take it at face value and just do the kind of thing i'm doing um because i will give like kind of specific examples like like that couch's example on on coastline for example that example for example you know as a roamer on cafe what it what like what are you achieving that's that's kind of what you have to ask yourself is like what is your goal of roaming well usually it's either to waste the attacker's time or get kills or hold control of something so that you can do other stuff. The biggest thing about roaming on cafe and really the only thing it gives you is you can make like these like holes in the floor. I probably should have brought some with a, a shotgun, but, but whatever. So you can make holes in the floor here 
to watch the push-in through the breach. You can make flo like holes in the floor here to watch the push-in through prep. Um, because cafe, the site only has two entrances, right? It has the, the red door, which you can't watch from above unless you made like an angle through the wall here, which I guess technically you could do. Um, and the prep, the prep door, which is very easy to hold from above because the attackers have to feed through here, worry about this window, worry about this door, etc., etc. So that's like the point of roaming is to contest these spots and make it so the attackers have to clear you in order to actually push into the site. So if they do want to go for that full clear and you're playing on the roam, what should be like, how should you play the roam? I guess is the question. So if you're Mozzie, whatever, you, you put some drones in. Most people come from the hatches or the skylight, right? There's not a lot of ways to enter the building unless you're going on repels. But most people are just going to come through the hatch, the skylight, whatever. So put your pets wherever you want, whatever. It doesn't ma really matter who you're playing. You can play Mozzie, you can play whatever. And you want to contest entry points. So because I'm going to I'm gonna go off the fact I'm assuming they're dropping the hatches to clear this. And this is more of like a competitive way to take the map. Uh, it's kind of like a competitive style to like full clear the map where, where teams will do that in comp. So, if I know a team's, like, going to come from red or whatever, I'll stand over here, wait for the drone. Maybe they do drone it, maybe they don't. If they do drone it, I just shoot the drone, get rid of the information, and change spots, right? So, maybe I'll come into piano at this point. Now, if there's a guy on piano window, I'm going to try to get out as fast as I can because I want to get trapped there, right? So, it's the other thing is you kind of always want that safe fallout route, fall off route and know, like, how you can get back to site safely so if they're like coming in from bottom white i obviously can't go down white because i'm gonna run into people waiting for me so at that point i'm like okay i either have to go down red or go down brown to actually get back to the site safely because my main my main goal really is to is to sh shoot drones so get rid, rid of the information the attacker has and waste as much time as i pretty much possibly can I shoot a drone move if i don't get droned again Maybe, I, maybe I'm in this corner. If I don't get drunk again, maybe they walk into Pixel and they're looking at this door and I just shoot them inside the, the head. Maybe they check it. Maybe they don't. Maybe I hide in a really weird corner like this. Maybe they check it. Maybe they don't. Maybe I shoot them in the side of the head. Again, so potential for kills right there. And if they do drone you, again, just shoot the drone, run away. Um, so that's like a typical way that you would roam. If you're doing like a very deep roam, it's like the constant moving, having your fall off route, which is sometimes safe, sometimes not. But that would be like a very, very hard... Uh, roam for you now from attackers perspective what what is going on so you're on the roof you drone red your drone gets shot then you're like okay this guy this guy could be anywhere at this point we got to we have to drone it again or else we might just he might just be hiding in any random corner or holding a long pixel angle you you don't really know what's going on it's it just makes it way more complicated and way more risky as an attacker just run through the building with with no information that's why like even bringing shotguns on room is sometimes really good because you can get rid of this information. If the attackers just give up, you can just hold the doorway and shotgun them in the face when they walk through the doorway. Like super simple stuff like that. Oh, yes. So it's very important as a defender to know when to fall back to the site. Or as a roamer, sorry. To know when to fall back to the site. So if I'm sitting on the top floor hiding behind this bar or whatever and my whole team is just getting massacred on site, it's time to go home. It's time to leave. I'm not going to sit here while my whole team gets destroyed. I'm going to go back to actually try and help. So say it's been say it's been two minutes, you know, two minutes into the round. I'm still on the top floor. I haven't really done much. I haven't been cleared. And uh, maybe they're only in Baker at this point. The team's maybe baiting a bit. Uh, I'm going to just come back to site because it's been a minute. The chance of someone coming to the top floor in the last minute is really, really pretty low. So I might as well come back to the site to actually try and help my team um, just defend it a little better at that point. Now, the other time to go back to site is maybe I shot like six drones. Maybe I shot six attackers drones. They have no information. So at that point, I can either hide in a corner and probably won't get droned, or I can come back around the site. You don't have to go right back to site. Come back around the site and just hold a weird angle. And, you know, maybe they're running in the last 30 seconds. They're not checking everything. They're, they're panicking at that point. So just holding angles, playing passive at that point is a, is a good time to just sit still and just boom, collect your freebies, collect your round win, easy dub. But yeah, the, the lanes, knowing your safe lanes is really important. So knowing what's safe, and this really helps if you have like a teammate who's on the cams being like, okay, they're not bottom white. So if I'm if I'm the teammate here, I'm sitting on site, maybe I'm smoke or I'm anchoring or whatever, I'm mute, Cade. I'm sitting on the site, I'm like, okay, um, say this cam shot. Okay, so they're not outside bottom white. There's They're in bakery. The bakery cam's maybe gone at this point. Uh, there's nothing in white. Uh, your pillars cam is good. Okay, they just shot pillar scam from cigar. Like you can come down white. Like white is your safe route. So having a teammate letting you know what's safe is is also very important, and it just adds to the complexity of your roam, I guess you could say. Let's talk about something completely different from roaming, 
which is um, double flanking. So this is another kind of if you got a pal, if you got a teammate, you can you can do so much with two people. It's it's ridiculous. Like I see people who 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 duo queue and just don't work together. But like I get my boy Oreo R6 on the mic with me, and dude, we just we'll just smoke everybody because we just do everything together, and that is just so lethal when you're playing five people who don't really know how to work together that well. So this is what this is what the play is. This is what the play is, okay? And this is a very specific bakery example. So say say they're going direct bakery, you know, their whole team's here. This is what you see a lot, like they'll come in through through this door. Actually, before we talk about the double flank thing, let's talk about contesting the entries. This is I play this spot a lot. So maybe I'll sit and bake and shoot a drone here and rotate over here and like hold a weird angle like this or just pre-fire this door. Or just run back to small, maybe just shoot a drone and leave. So that's 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 a situation where you can kind of play that, play for that info, get rid of the info, and just kind of leave, and then they have to redrone it. They have to waste some more time, whatever. Um, but let's say they are taking bakery. Let's say they've, you know, opened this wall up and they're holding they're holding your prep from here or whatever. They've opened up the main wall. They got a guy holding like small bakery, and they're they're kind of locking down this area and trying to get this wall up and go for a plant, right? You see this a lot. Um, at least I see this a lot. I don't know what it's like in lower ranks, but the, the, the bake take is pretty common. You might even see this nomaded. Okay, so let's say my teammate's mute, right? And me and mute are doing a hard roam. It's me and mute on the roam. We know they're not clearing the roam. Okay, we want to go help our teammate, our teammates out on the site. So we're going to get mute to come over here. He's going to mute the top of the red stairs right here. That will propagate through the floor and mute the nomad charge on... The small bake door okay so now we don't have to worry about the air jab because it's muted off even if it isn't muted off i'm just gonna let mute tank this and i'm gonna i'm gonna peek off of his his limp body on the floor i'm gonna i'm gonna hold this as he's ragdolled onto the floor and kill the attacker that swings and tries to kill him okay um now if it does come down to actually hitting the air jab you probably want your 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 friend with worse aim to do this um so that you can smoke the guy that tries to kill him, right? You want the guy with good aim to try and take the gunfight. Just just general general point. So that's that's where we can pull out the stats and, and compare stats. Uh, okay, but it's muted. Let's pretend it's muted, okay? So what are we going to do? I'm going to get mute right here. This is my boy mute, okay? He's he's right on my booty hole right here. We're, we're just absolutely lined up. We're ready to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of quick peek this for info. If there's nobody outside this window, I'm like, okay, we're good to go. Like, let's go, let's go my boy. And mute's following me up. Uh, actually, no, no, I'm going to bait Mute because I have better aim and I have the better gun. So Mute's going to come in here with the SMG-11. He's going to get absolutely fried because you know what happens? There's an attacker standing right here and he's ready for it. And this attacker <laughs> fucking lasers Mute, okay? Mute is toast. But you know what? I, you know what? Because I'm, I'm glued to his left cheek here, what happens is as soon as this guy starts shooting, I know where he is. He calls him up behind the desk and I just pre-fire him. So my boy Mute is down for the count. But because... He sacrificed his life for the better good of the team. I smoke this guy, and I proceed to smoke everybody else in bakery who is not watching the flank, right? So I just I just got a triple kill for my team, and we're back in action. We, we basically win the round off this double flank, right? So double flanking, and you can do this on tons of sites where, you know, you go up the staircases together, um, just walk around together, uh, but obviously you don't want to just be, like, two people walking in the middle of a hallway with a drone on you, and then you just get folded. But, like, you do have to play it smart, but it can be very, very effective. Now, we're going to talk about what I like to call a, a half roam. And realistically, this is something you should do, like, all the time. So, it's it's something you should do when you're, at least when you're, like, running anchor setup. So, you're, like, maybe not committing to a, a full roam. Uh, but it's, it's a little half roam that will just either, one, get you more kills, or two, let you waste more time and more utility. But it's something that should be very safe to do and it's just it's just something that is will just dramatically increase your your defense success so firstly if you're not opening this this freezer wall in oregon you're kind of trolling you can you can open this one as well um i'm just when i when i played comp we reinforce it so i still reinforce it but some people open it as well but what this kind of half roam is is you find a place that you're perfectly safe to get back to site so if the hatch is reinforced and I'm playing all the way up here, if I'm playing all the way up at the top of the stairs, two things happen. Either I drone, shoot the drone, and come back to site safely because there's no there's no cutoff spots in the freezer, right? I can come all the way back to site safely. So I shoot the drone and I come back 
or I come back to here after I shoot a drone and maybe I shoot another drone and fall back. Um, but what this does is if the attackers just don't drone this, they're just walking into a shotgun. Like they're like literally, if you hear a guy coming here, maybe you swing a bit as you hear him or you just sit here prone like this or something. But the guys that are coming into freezer without drone are just going to die. So this could, this could give you a free kill and someone just coming through the west side. And if nobody comes, then whatever. You can just still come back to site super safe. Now, the thing about this is, like, if they open your hatch, you, you want to come back. You want to come back because you can, as an attacker, you can get in this hatch and cut people off who are on the freezer stairs. So as soon as your, your cutoff is compromised, as soon as your cutoff is compromised, you want to return back here. I mean, you, you could have the balls to come like this and just shock on this guy in the face, which I have done before, but it's a little risky. Um, so maybe just don't do that. But you can do the same thing on the back tower stairs. So, um, you know, you start up like this with a shotgun. If you hear them come in this door and this door, maybe you just back up because you don't want to get peeked from both sides. Or you play like this until you get droned, you shoot the drone, and then you can come back. And the only cutoff really is if they get all the way into tarps, which your teammates should be holding this area already. And that, the chances of that are pretty low right yeah so that's like that's like the half room but you can do this all the time every site you extend out a little bit from the site shoot a couple drones don't shoot a drone and get a kill um and it's just you just need to do this if you want to get better on your defenses otherwise the attackers are going to take map control so fast and this is something i've done while solo queuing to champ is that i would come in the west side of oregon i would come all the way up here i would check there's nobody here I'd get all the way down in the freezer and I would get all the way into this spot in the first 30 seconds in the round. Like I shouldn't be able to get into this spot 30 seconds of the round because I should be contested before this point all the time. It should never come down to me getting here instantly because then I can hold the entire cross in sight. And then my, I'll let my teammates do the rest of the work because I've already done like a lot of the work that you need to do on this site. So it's contest the entries. Again, it's kind of like an entry but it's more like halfway into the map entry. It's more of contest the entries into site rather than playing just in the site. When it comes down to the last like 30 seconds, you know, the 2v2s, the intimate numbers, as I like to say, you know, when you and your boy are holding hands in the back of the site, waiting for the bomb to be planted, this is something that you need to get better at playing. Because what I'll see a lot of time is I'll be sitting here with my nightdress cell in the closet, or I'm spectating the guy sitting in the nightdress cell with the plot, closet and i'm hearing the plant go down here or whatever and my boy is just sitting here my boy is just sitting here as if like as if the clock wasn't at zero 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 right now and he's just sitting here so what you need to be doing which is sounds very obvious but people don't do mess that up is nitroing the plant wow who would have thought who would have thought we gotta we gotta stop the plant so that's the very basic levels is stop the plant with your utility smokes nitro cell etc if there's 15 seconds on the clock and they can only feed through this hallway smoke off the hallway if you have three smokes smoke off the hallway wait 10 seconds smoke it again or five if you have three like just to be safe um so using your utility just make it so they literally cannot win seems pretty straightforward to me i don't know why people just don't do that like what is wrong with people um the other thing too say it's a 2v2 okay me and me and my boy my boy neptune are, are are in this two twos neptune's maybe right here right just waiting for the push through the hallway rather than holding this aggressive angle with 15 seconds just to get smoked and die you should be holding something like this right so you can see if they go into freezer if they push all the way up to the hallway you got them and then the other teammate should be something like get this get rid of this maybe i'm in the closet you know let's say i'm in the closet because realistically you're probably gonna have a guy in the closet maybe i'm sitting here like this so at this point there's 15 seconds you just have to stay alive until you hear the sound of that plant so once you hear the sound of the plant, there's maybe 10 seconds or whatever. That's when the teammate will push up the hallway. Because when this guy is planting the bomb, wherever he may be, right here, right here, the guy covering has to cover everything. So this, this guy covering not only has to make sure people don't push up the hallway, they have to make sure they don't push through sight. So a lot of people have been opening this wall. So let's pretend they, they shot open this wall, right? So if the guy covering is holding this, I can kill him from here. Or, if he's holding it like this, the guy pushing through the site can stop the plant. Um, now, if he's holding it like this, like the rotate, the hallway guy will be pushing up. So, if you, if you, as long as these two go at the same time, the guy covering can't kill both of them. 
And if he kills one, you then know where the cover is. So let's say he kills my friend in the hallway. I stop the plant, I back up, maybe I try to nitro this guy, and then I go prone and try to stay alive for the for the last five seconds of the round. So it's about playing the time properly, I guess you could say, which people just don't. People just don't play the time properly. You have to work with your like last team that's alive, so you're not giving this one guy like two 1v1s. Instead, you want him to be actively in a 1v2, even though technically it is a 2v2 with the guy planting. Um, or if it is just one guy left, let him plant. Let him plant the bomb. If he doesn't stick it, he won't win. If he sticks it, the bomb goes down. You can then double retake on him at the same time to actually win the round. I know it's hard because a lot of people won't actually play with you in these situations, but if like you have a squad that you play with or even just a friend and you're in these situations or just try to talk to the random, like try to guide him as you go. Say what you're doing so he knows when to push and say like, okay, I'm going through like push, push now. And he might not. He might not. Like to be honest, most of the time he probably won't. And you get in those situations where you have shitty people, and sometimes it just sucks, but the more, like, vocal you are about it, the, like, better your chances are that they will actually listen to you. Oh, the other thing about playing time, right? If you are roaming and you've wasted a lot of time, come fall back around the site. Like, I did mention that a bit on Cafe, but if there's 30 seconds left and I'm, I'm roaming in tower and I have just not been cleared out of tower... Maybe I just sit here like this, wait for them to sprint through the tarp door, or I come down here and, and I and I prone like this. In the last 30 seconds, they're not they're not gonna drone this. And if they do, they are extremely dis disciplined and you're probably playing people who are just straight up better than you. But the odds of that are so low that you might as well just do this. But there's 20 seconds and I get droned here, I'm just gonna be like, why are they droning in the last 20 seconds? Because they're gonna drone me, they'll probably kill me at that point, but the chances of them droning me are probably probably one out of 25. So, what, 4% chance? It's probably a 4% chance I get droned here in the last 20 seconds. So, you know, do dumb stuff. Literally. Sometimes dumb stuff just works. Dumb, but it's smart. It's smart, but it's dumb. Okay? Okay. The other thing, which is probably just the stup it's just the stupidest thing about Siege, is people team kill their teammates, apparently. This doesn't really happen in Plat Diamond, but people team kill their teammates for picking ops that they think are bad. Okay, I'm just gonna say it right now, guys. No operators are bad. Let's let's put it this way: no operator is so bad that you would be better off killing them than just letting them play with that operator. The chances are, if your teammate's picking Clash or Cav or whatever that you think is garbage, Cav. Um, Maybe they just play Cav all the time. Maybe they're actually really good with Cav. Even though Cav is not an ideal pick by any means. Maybe they're just nasty with her. Maybe they just go kill and win the round. And, you know, you can't control who they pick. So why would you ever team kill them? It makes no sense to me. Um, but at the same time, like, just branch out, guys. Just branch out your operator selection. Like, I know people say, like, like I like one time I played Capcan. Someone's like, you're actively throwing. You pick Capcan on match point. Well, I'm like, well, they're not droning sorry they're not droning they're playing very aggressive they're playing very fast paced like the cap can is what's slowing them down because now they have to drone every doorway or check every doorway as they come through it to make sure there's not a trap on it and if they don't they're going to hit the trap they're going to die right so like cap can is really good for like really aggressive teams that that aren't droning or they're playing very fast if you know like here i'll i'll uh i'll reset the round here i'll, I'll give you another example but in general, you want to branch out your operator selection to actually counter the team that you're playing. So, more so in a sense of like, rather than a direct counter, because you do only have three rounds of defense, you should try after the first round to counter the play style that the other team uses. So if they all play super passive and they all wait and spawn, maybe you just bunker up. Maybe you just bunker up, you wait for that plant, and then you go from there. Wait for them to either push through the site and shock them in the face, or wait for them to go for the plant. Or let's say... Let's say I've played this squad before or we're going back to kids after we lost it. And what they did last time was they didn't go they didn't go big window or attic. Let's say they their whole team just tried to push for master. And what they did was open this wall. So now this round, I'm gonna pick Cade. I'm gonna switch my operator to Cade. I'm gonna Cade off this wall. I'm gonna keep my second Cade. And when they break this Cade by nading it off, ashing it off, or whatever, I'll I'll wait by the wall, wait to hear the sound of the thermite, throw the Cade on, and and break the thermite charge. And then you know what I'll do? I'll pick the Cade up again. And then maybe they try to nade it because they think the Cade's on there. They wasted all their nades. I still have a Cade. I throw it back on. They can no longer open this wall. So now, when it comes down to them actually entering the site, they have to all come through this one door because they've invested all their time into only going master. Like, they could maybe come up white, 
But there's that thing about spreading out. Like, if my teammates are playing this properly, maybe they're down here and they know no one's west side and they're just holding bottom white rather than being all stacked on site. So that's that's why expanding out of the site's really important because that way if they try to rotate late to come up white, I have a guy down here that's like, no, they can't, they can't come up white. They can't come up white. I'm watching the hallway. So if a guy comes through the hallway like this, he's going to get shot in the back of the head, right? So if you are playing those really, really slow teams that are passive, like they take forever to clear, they're just baiting and baiting and baiting, run ops that make it even slower for them. Run mute. Run mozzie. So that way, when they do come up to the situation where, where they're trying to actually take stuff, they run into even more problems and then you're stalling their time more and then you end up in those situations where there's 20 seconds and they all have to run into site and die but they have included any utilities so you have maybe a malusi maybe you have some shields on site etc 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 so like don't be afraid to switch your ops up based off the play style that you're against because people just people just don't do that like just straight up like i don't like they just don't people have their main operator and they just play their main operator on every site like, switch your op. Switch your op, guys. Please. Please. Like, counter the people you're playing. If everyone in gold brushes and shoots with Amaru, bring Frost. Put them on the common spots. Hide with a shotgun under a window. Just do stuff that is, like, so obvious that you're like, oh, no, that doesn't make sense. Why would I do that? Like, they're going to they're gonna do this. Like, it's not that deep. I guarantee you it's not that deep. If you see... A, if you see <laughs> a ton of utility, like, go Twitch and go shock it. Like... Just basic counters work so effectively in ranked. It's ridiculous. You know, if they're if they're getting in the building in the first 15 seconds, start spawn killing them. If I know that these guys are 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 trying to get into lobby and rush up armory, like if they're just rushing every round, I'll be like, hey, somebody go sit in small tower. I'm gonna sit in classroom. And if they try to rush lobby, I'll kill them. If they try to rush the west side, you'll kill them. And then at that point, the only other spots they can really come from is big tower so like i'll sit here he'll ash in through the front door and i'll shoot him in the side of the head i remember one time it was a basement defense and this is while i was solo queuing like through gold plat whatever i came into the west side of the map and i sat here like this this is the exact angle i held and what happened this ash came from small tower ashed into small tower and tried to rush down showers hall to get to freezer really early and i did this and I killed him. And then he does this. And then I was like, yeah, well, well, you're dead. And my team's in a 5v4. And you know what I can do now? I'll just I'll just jog back to site. Thank you very much. And I ran to the basement and we won the round. Like it's like hide in a corner until you're drone, bro. Like straight up. Straight up. So we're on Villa, but what I really want to talk about Villa is is more of the of the team play. Um, and in my opinion, team play is infinitely better than five dudes who are gold one and have 1.5 KDs. I'm gonna take my team with a one KDs all day. That's working together. Okay. Um, team play is so strong, so strong. Comboing operators together just makes them infinitely better. Um, doing things together just makes it infinitely better. So we're gonna we're gonna dive into some team play a little deeper here now. So the first thing I want to say is just two two people is enough for team play. Two people is enough to have teamwork. If it's if it's you and a friend just playing by yourself, and I I duo queue with Oreo R6 all the time. I used to at least. Haven't really really duo queued in a while. But when I did, I was playing with Oreo, and we would just do everything together. Like I mentioned before. Obviously, there's a the double flanking that we talked about on Cafe with the Mozzie and the Mute or really whoever. So let's say um, let's say they're in Master. They're opening triple wall. And it's not looking good. They have lots of time. They're setting up for a plant. We got to do something. I'm like, Jack, get over here. Let's do this. We double up on this doorway. Maybe a quick peek. Maybe you just knife the doorway or whatever. You try to get some info as much as you can. And we're glued to each other. I check this corner. Maybe I get shot in the back from here. So as I'm checking this corner, I get shot in the back from a guy that's standing here. So my boy Jack is like, okay, I know right where he is. He just pre-fires this. He freaking mercs this kid. Doesn't matter how shit his aim is. He's going to smoke this kid. Um, but of course, that wouldn't happen because Jack has terrible aim and my aim's way better. So Jack's going to be the guy getting smoked because he's going to go first. I'm going to bait him and then I'm going to smoke this guy, right? Very effective. Then we have bathroom control. We're, we start. I start murking all these guys' bathroom. It's over. 
let's say let's say it was just me doing this. Oh, this guy smoked me. I'm dead. Now it's a now it's a five v three in their planning rather than us completely changing the tide of the game, right? The other thing you can do with a teammate, Valk is banned a lot on Villa, um, but if that's the case, like normally I could put a Valk cam here and play underneath here. I'll, I'll just show you what I mean. I'll just go do it. I'll just go do it, dude. So let's say I'm holding underneath and I'm not cleared out and they're just going for this direct master. So I can do this. I can place my nitro there. I can go on the camera, wait for a guy to walk here, get off my cam and nitro him, right? That's that's something very simple you can do with Valkyrie on your own. You can get nitro kills very easy with Valk on your own. Okay, um, well actually, I don't have Valkyrie, but I do have a teammate and I'm Mozzie or whatever. So if I'm bringing a C4 and I have a teammate, and you can do this with default cams, you can do this with um, bulletproof cams. So I get my teammate to either run a bulletproof cam or I use the default cams. Let's shoot this real quick. Okay, so let's say the site is Aviator. So the other side of the map, this this floor, the other side, right? That's the Aviator bomb site. So off of this cam, I can actually pre-place a nitro under here, right? So I'm going to pre-place the nitro under here, and then I'm just going to go back to site. Or I'm going to roam underneath or whatever. I'm, like, completely far away from site at this point. But my nitro set here. And then, so let's say they're clearing from master over or bathroom over. If my teammate's on this cam and he sees the guy come in the bathroom like this and shoot the cam, he calls for me to blow the nitro. So as soon as this guy shoots the cam and he sees this, the nitro under the floor here, I blow it, and this guy dies. And that's just super easy kill. I wouldn't be able to wash that cam myself, get off the cam, and have time to blow it because it's such a close angle. Whereas this one, I can see them running through it and get off the cam and do it like with timing. But this one, I'm going to need a teammate to actually help me with it. So that's that's a free kill right there. You can do the same thing on this map on 90 where um, you can't ping it on the camera, but you can see it. So if I put a uh, nitro cell here, right? So what do attackers do? They're going to come to this hallway. They're going to go like this. They're going to shoot the cam and come back into boar. So as soon as they shoot this cam, my teammate calls it. They come back here. They get nitro cells from underneath. Another free kill. Cam work, teamwork, two people, easy clap, right? And that's that's a little more cheeky. That's more for just, like, getting picks. It's not going to win you the game. Uh, it'll help, but it probably won't win you the game by getting a kill like that. But it will help. So, like, just getting the advantage is always going to be nice. Did you know that on defense, you can actually be an entry fragger? That's right. You say, drone me in, chief. Your teammate goes echo. And they just drone their echo drones around the map looking for people as you follow it. My teammates, so pretend there's an echo drone. Let's say, let's say four meters in front of me at all times, okay? So it's driving around the map. I'm just following it. Oh, there's a guy clock. Oh, okay. And I smoke this guy. He gets pinged. He gets echoed. If it is like real close quarters, it might be good to just hop the echo drone up and stun them. So say there's a guy here and he's on a drone. My team's like, oh, he's on a drone right in front of you. I can just come and knife him, keep going. You know, if your teammate has shit aim, make him go echo and drone you around. That's a good way for if you have if, if you have somebody with good aim and someone with bad aim and you're playing together, get the bad aim guy to let like help the good aim guy succeed basically, because that's how you're gonna be the most effective. Here's another, here's some more stupid ways to get kills with two people. Okay, let's go back to the trophy site. You have one teammate hide, and the other teammate shoots drones around that person. So you'll have one teammate in the bathtub, right? This is a classic spot. People always hide in the bathtub. A lot of time, this might just go missed drone. The attackers just might not drone it. They might just be lazy and not check it. But if you want to secure the fact that they don't drone it, you get a teammate in here in Astro. So my teammate's prone in the bathtub. I wait for the drone to come through. I, sh I shoot the drone or whatever. I back up, maybe shoot some shots at the attackers. And now the attackers are going to be tunnel vision on the fact I'm on the Astro stairs. So they're like, there's a guy in Astro, there's a guy on Astro stairs. So what do the attackers do? They don't have a drone. They're probably not going to redrone this. They might redrone Astro, but they probably are like, okay, well, bathroom's good because the guy just shot the drone and ran away, right? So now they're coming through bathroom, chasing this guy down. And this crazy bitch pops out of the bathtub and pounds them in the back of the head and they're dead. Now, you can do this on cafe as well, or, you, I mean, you can do it on any map if you find a good hiding spot. Where I like to do on cafe is, like, have a guy, if you're in, like, one of the middle floor bomb sites or the basement, or maybe even piano if you want, you have a guy prone, like, on the, um, on the piano, like, the little, there's a little, like, ledge there, he prones there, the other guy plays, like, the pixel area, shoots a drone that comes through piano, and he leaves, and then if they don't re-drone piano, which they might not, 
then you're gonna pop up and uh, probably probably smoke the attackers. Or they don't realize they're there. You flank them laying the round. They're like, oh well, well, there was a guy in PM the whole time. Who would have thought? Another super effective way to play like those lower numbers or just play with your teammate as well is holding crossfires. So say I got a guy here. Rather than holding like an aggressive angle into master, I'm gonna hold this angle and I'm gonna be looking here. And I'm gonna say, this is what I would say. If I'm holding this angle, I would say, I'm holding a passive angle on the bricks push in. So this is a passive angle because he has to actually come in the site and not only worry about this and this and a guy swinging here and a guy here, but he's not going to be looking at a passive angle like this as he pushes in. He's probably going to be probably do, do something like this and then maybe check this after if he's smart. Um, or he might just walk into the middle of the open and die. So if I'm holding like a passive angle here and my teammate goes, oh, okay, I'm on triple ball. Like I'm just holding a passive angle. He holds this. Maybe, maybe I'm here. Maybe I'm here. If he's holding that, I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to swing off your contact. So what happens is I play like this. He plays like that other angle we we're talking about. And then when, as soon as this guy starts shooting at him, I'm going to swing in and shoot on this guy. So this guy, this guy cannot kill both of us at the same time. It is literally impossible unless he's the best player in the world, which I guarantee you're not playing against the best player world. I guarantee it. You're not playing against the best player world all the time. Okay. Cause I'm playing against all of them apparently. Cause like I just get smoked all the time. Finding more stuff like that is going to just, it's just going to, drastically increase your plays. And the more and more you can do with that stuff, the more and more and more free kills you get, the more and more you rand you win. As just a general note, like the echo drone thing, you can do that on attack too. Like get get a teammate to drone you in. Stick the guy with bad aim on the drone, he can drone you in and you can just go crazy. But yeah, that's pretty much all I got. That's pretty much all I got, guys.